Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create this engine wiggle effect right here. And after that, I'll also show you how to create this fire burst right here and also how the texture node will look like for this fire so it looks a little bit more interesting and realistic. This is my second car video. In the first car video, I showed you how to animate the car driving over a bump with this little bouncy effect. If you want to check it out, click the video at the top right corner. And with that, let's get started. As you can see, for the wiggle effect, I had to separate the engine from all the other car parts. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't done this already, simply select your car parts, go into edit mode, and then select all the vertices that corresponds to your engine. And in my case, this took a long time because they weren't really combined and I had to really go into all that notches and select all the little vertices and do it like this. But after like 10, 20 minutes, I had separated the whole part, the engine part. And if you have done that and selected all the parts you want, you can press P and press separate by selection. This will create a second object and your car part and the engine part will be separated. From there on, usually your engine will have the origin point at a way different location. To set the origin point, this little point in the middle here, exactly in the center of your engine, uh, you can just go to object, set origin and press um, origin to center of mass or center of volume. It doesn't really matter which one you take, um, you can try out both and pick the one you prefer. This will just update uh, around where your angel will rotate. If your origin point, let's say, let's move the origin point over here, um, the engine will rotate around this point right now. If the origin point is in the middle of your engine, it will rotate around this. For this little wiggle animation here, uh, we don't have to actually animate it by ourselves. We can simply add in a keyframe. I will delete the old ones I have in here, so uh, nothing happens right now. But I can press I to add in a keyframe and then go down to the X orientation because if I rotate it around X, it will move like this. Actually, we don't want the X orientation to be selected in the timeline. We want to go into the graph editor and open up these selections again and click the X orientation or rotation. Right click on it and press hide unselected curves so we can only focus on the X orientation, X rotation, I'm sorry. After pressing this, uh, we can go to the modifiers tab and add in a simple noise modifier. And if you press play now, you can see, oh, the engine shakes a lot and we can scale down the shakiness. The speed of the shakiness is the scale and the strength is how, how strong it moves from left to right. For, I think for this effect, I just had 0.1, maybe even that is too much. Yeah, 0 0.1 is okay, -ish. it's a little too much, so let's choose 0 0.05. And if you press play, you can see it has this little wiggle effect. Maybe it's even still too much, so let's go with 0 0.03. And if it's too fast, you can scale it down even further. Something like this looks super fun. Now in the original video, I had the engine do like a vroom vroom effect, like it rotates a little more for two times. Uh, this you can simply keyframe. So let's say we go to frame 60, something like this, frame 60. Now let's go to frame 65 and we just manually rotate it around the X axis a little to the left, press I to set a keyframe. Let's go to frame 70 and move it back. So we have a vroom, something like this, and then we can just simply duplicate those keyframes again. I can actually collapse them so it's, it looks a little cleaner. And now if I press play, we have this little wiggle and a vroom vroom. And this is actually all I had to do for this effect. All right, let's move on to our fire burst. This one is, was super fun and super interesting to make and I would recommend you also uh, if you want to do such a fire simulation thing, don't do it in your actual scene because this is uh, kind of tedious and a little complicated if everything is in the way. I would recommend you just create a new file and start from scratch here. 
all I did was I started with a sphere, I moved it up a little bit and I scaled it on the X axis so it looks flat like this. So I can later place this in the exhaust of the car. Uh, with that selected, you can just press F3 and search for quick smoke effect and this will set up most of your stuff. Um, for our case, we need the domain to be more on the left side so it can burst out into one direction. Uh, so select the domain and scale it on the X axis and also move it a little to the left side. So we have more space there uh, that the fire can boost in that direction. For now, we only have smoke. Um, to change that, select your object and go into the physics section and change it from smoke to fire. If I would press play now, the fire would just simply go up and it looks a little boring. To actually have this burst effect, we need an initial velocity. Uh, I will add initial initial velocity on the x-axis, so it moves on this side, and because it's it goes on the left side, it's minus x. So let's type in minus 10 on the x-axis and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks, looks kind of fine to me. That looks good for now. Uh, I will actually scale down the sphere a little bit. We don't have that big of a fire. To have a little bit more detail while playing around, uh, we can select the domain and up the resolution to 64 for now. Later I will boost this maybe to 128 to have even more details. For now this looks good, it looks fine to me. Um, to have a little bit more variation, select the sphere again and under texture, add in a new noise texture and choose cloud. And in your physics section, you can scroll also to texture, select it, activate it, and the texture you created should already be in here. If not, you can simply select it. This will just um, give the, the fire a little bit more um, noise in the fire itself. To have more control over the fire burst, uh, we can also select the domain again and scroll down to heat buoyancy and vorticity. As always in fire simulations, play around with the settings until you find something you like. Vorticity, I will mo move it up to 0.1 so it wiggles a little bit more, has a little bit more style to it. Um, maybe for a gas fire, because the, the one I created was not a typical fire but more of a gas fire, we don't want too much vorticity. It should rather be a straight fire if you understand what I mean. So I will bring this back to zero and I will also not add too much noise because I feel like this would destroy the effects that I'm going for. Um, I think I haven't even touched too many settings in the original one. The only thing I did was animate the fuel, so how much fire shoots out or gets generated. If I put the fuel to zero, you can see nothing gets generated. And to animate the fuel, we can go, let's say, to frame 20 and press I on the fuel tab to set a keyframe. Then let's move to frame 21, type in one for fuel, press I again, and let's go to frame, let's say, 25, press I again, and let's go to frame 26 and put the fuel back to zero and press I again. So all I did now was like frame 20, nothing is activated, frame 21, it sets the fuel to one, so it emits some fire. And at frame 25, uh, I set a keyframe uh, for one, and at frame 26, a keyframe for zero. So no fire gets emitted after that. If we look at it, it looks something like this. And it's it's kind of a fire burst, as you can see. Fire gets generated and it will blow out. Uh, let's put them closer together to see how it looks. Maybe put them further apart. Can't really remember the settings again, but it was something like this. And with that, you can just play around until you find a, a cool setting you like. You can also up the initial velocity, let's say to minus 20 and see how this looks. 
well this looks even better so a higher initial velocity so the f it will it pushes the fire more to the left side in the beginning let's see how it looks again yes this looks way better let's make it a little closer something like this maybe let's try even minus 30 so boom okay this looks cool let's go minus 25 i don't want too much of it and yeah, that's actually all there is to it. Just play around with the activation and deactivation of the um, fuel setting. You can also do this a few times in Siri. So let's activate it once, twice, and it will also create a different kind of fire burst um, every time you activate it or normally it does. And I think for the last bit, I just had the fire um, stay a little longer. So it looks like this, whoosh, whoosh, and then a bigger fire in the end. That's all there is to it. Uh, maybe the fire in the end didn't have um, one fuel, so or, but only 0.5 fuel. So let's put in a keyframe for 0.5. So the fire isn't too big in the end. So we have one whoosh, two whoosh, and then a little fire going on. And this was all there is to it. Then I selected the domain. I set the resolution division to 128, so it has a little bit more detail the fire. I won't play it now because this will take too much to load. And in the end, I simply selected the start and end frame. Let's say 1 to 100, selected where it should um, where it should save the VDB fire simulation. Set the type to all and press bake. After the bake is done, we can see the result and it looks super cool already again. Uh, I just did this with a few clicks and it looks super cool. I really love that you can simply create this small fire simulations in Blender uh, with, with that ease. Now maybe you're ask yourself how I get this fire simulation into the original scene. This is super simple because you can just go into your original file and go to file append. Then search the Blender file where you saved the uh, fire simulation. So I select this one. In here we can select object and in there search for the smoke domain. Double click on it and as you can see this smoke domain or the fire domain uh, gets imported. And if you have baked the simulation you can see it already displays it over here. Uh, wait, let me start the frame on zero so we can see the sim simulation gets played and we can also scale it up or down and just place it where we want it so you can move it around freely and you have all these different types of movements you can do uh, without have to re-simulate the whole thing again uh, just keep in mind uh, you can't actually change the simulation of the fire in here. If you want to change or create a whole new simulation, you have to go into your old file, change some settings and delete the old bake and bake it again and bring it back into the, on, into the final scene. If you have placed it in the right location, I also created two fire simulations for this effect or video right here. We can go onto the um, texturing of the fire. Texturing some fire is actually pretty straightforward therefore I will delete my fire for now and create a new one. Normally the smoke domain already has a principal volume shader in here so I will just add the principal volume for me too and plug it into volume right here. In the fire simulation there are different values saved and one of these values is called flame and we can call this by using the attribute node right here and type in flame and plug this into the emission strength. As we can see right now, we can see the flames, but they are just gray. To change that, we can add in a color ramp node and plug the color of the attribute into the factor and this color output into the um, emission color right here. Now we can set the different values for the flames. So we can select the black color and turn it into a red one right here. And also select the other color over here and turn it into another color, maybe something more uh, white, orangish, something like this. Or you can you can choose any color, whatever you want. Play around with the 
the colors you like, make it more red, more orangish. I always also add a third color in the end and make it a little darker just to have more details. Uh, as you can see right now, it's pretty dark to gl make it glow more. We can add in a math node and plug it in between the attribute and the emission strength and change it from add to multiply and plug in the value of let's say five. So it already glows a little bit more. Maybe we can also add in a 10. And now to control the light intensity of the flame, we can ag again add in a color ramp um, in between the attribute and the multiply node. And now if you move the black slider up, you can see the color on the outside gets uh, smaller. If you move the white color down, uh, the glow gets more intense. But the real technique comes if we add in a third color put it into the end right here and make it a little darker. So let's move this color down to a dark tone and move it more to the left side and boom. As you can see, we get like this, this details of the flame inside the flame um, and make it way more realistic. The closer we get, the the finer the lines get. Uh, maybe don't overdo it, just put it somewhere around there. Uh, just play around with the different white and black values over here until you find a setting that you enjoy, that you like. And after that, it's actually done. Um, because the fire always emits a little bit more smoke, we can also increase the density of the smoke. So let's put the density of 30 in here. And maybe as you can see already, we have some, some more smoke over there to make it a little darker. Just change the color of the smoke to a darker tone. And maybe right now there is not even too much smoke. So let's move to a later point in time until we see a little bit more smoke. Let's maybe up the density to, to even 100. For now, uh, you can't really see the smoke because we only selected fire before. Uh, there will be a little smoke uh, generated, but usually you can't actually see them too much. If you want more smoke, uh, go into your fire settings and in the flow type, change it from fi only fire to fire and smoke. So if you have a little bit more smoke in here. And that's, that's mostly all there is to it. Uh, a quick tip for the final render. Usually, I don't know if this happens for your scene, but usually with uh, smoke and this VDB sequences, you get some shadow artifacts. And in your cycles render option, if you scroll down to your transparent light options, let's put this to one. You can see there's only one big black shadow under the smoke domain. If we put this, let's say to five, we can see there it already is spread up a little bit, but wait, let me let me remove the the trees for now so we can actually see better what I'm talking about. As you can see right now, there are like these this pixel shadows under here. That's just because the transparency is not so detailed. Let's go to eight. We already have a little less um, of these pixel shadows, but still there are a few going on. Um, just up the transparency until all these weird um, shadow glitches are gone. For me, it was um, at f at transparency, I think, 15. Uh, now every all of these shadow artifacts are gone. Just to be really sure, I went all the way up to 20. But this is up to you and up to your scene. And yeah, after that, you have this cool fire um burst out here i know in the video the fire was blue i did this uh later in color correction in davinci resolve <laughs> because i just wanted to see how it looks but you can also change it already in the shader editor over here just play around with the different uh, color values and yeah you got it all right, this was it for this small car tutorial. Um, if you want to see more about cars or car animation or, or whatever simulations of fire, just write it in the comments. I'm happy to answer it or make a video about it. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Peace out.